Hi! Welcome to my channel, My Great Wall of Manga! I'm Amanda, and I've been in love with manga for well over a decade. In fact, I even built a wall out of it! On this channel, I'll be pulling a series off the wall at random, and we'll go over a quick summary, introduce you to some of the main characters of the series, and I'll give you five reasons why you should read this manga. Okay, in this episode, we're going to be looking at Gate 7 by Clamp. Okay, the story of Gate 7 is about Chikahito Takamoto that takes a school trip to Kyoto. He is a huge history buff and a huge fan of Kyoto. While he's there, he meets this strange girl named Hana and she has magical powers to like fight monsters and use all sorts of spells and stuff and she's accompanied by two different men that also seem to have magical powers well needless to say chikahito is kind of freaked out by this and they kind of take him home and one of the men that's with Hana tries to cast a spell on him to make him lose his memories. Well, it ends up the magic that they have doesn't work on him. So he keeps all of his memories and he goes home, but weirdly enough, a few months later, Chikahito has a opportunity to go to school in Kyoto and because he loves Kyoto so much and the history of Kyoto, he totally accepts. Not surprising, it ends up that within a very short amount of time, he meets Hana again. And it ends up that Hana had put a spell on him to make him come back to Kyoto because she really likes him. When he gets to Kyoto the second time, Hana talks him into living at her house. And so when he accepts the offer to stay at one of the rooms at the house where Hana and Sakura and Tachibana live, he kind of gets pulled into this magical world where Hana and many others wield magic to control, summon, or like destroy magical monsters. One of the things that is kind of interesting about this story is that there's a lot of things about Hana that are very mysterious. And she claims that Chikahito is just like her, though he doesn't have any magic. So there's kind of a question of, well, how is he like her? Okay, now for the characters. First up is Chikahito. He is a huge history buff. He loves everything about Japanese history. And he's almost a otaku when it comes to Kyoto history. He knows about all the major people in Kyoto history. He knows about all the major battles. He knows about all of the emperors and generals that were around during the golden age of Kyoto. So he is just such a fanboy of the location. It is super fun to watch him totally geek out about every little thing in Kyoto. Next up is Hana. She is not your classic magical girl. She's cute and everything and she can use spells and stuff, but she's very mysterious and almost childlike. Uh, she doesn't talk much. What she says doesn't always make clear sense. Like how she said that Chikahito is like her, but doesn't really elaborate how. And she can become happy over very small things. Like she loves noodles. And anybody that gives her noodles, she loves them too. 
Next up is one of the grown men that is kind of her attendant at her house and kind of takes care of her. His name is Tachibana. He's very cool, not particularly friendly, does not trust Chikahito at all, especially once he finds out that magic doesn't affect Chikahito. So for him, for Tachibana, that is a huge red flag. He sees Chikahito as somebody potentially dangerous. And so he definitely keeps Chikahito at arm's length. But though he is very cold, he also has a soft spot for Hana. Basically, whatever it is that she wants, he'll totally go for it. Uh, next up is Sakura. He's definitely kind of a laid back, relaxed, almost house husband type, where he has the opinion of, well, if Hana thinks Chikahito is okay, then he must be okay, right? It's no big deal. And he also just thinks that Ahana is the cutest thing ever and will do whatever it is to make her happy. If that means cooking noodles every single night for dinner for weeks, he'll do that because Hana likes noodles. Okay, and five reasons why you should read Gate 7. Number one, the biggest thing. I mean, Clamp has wonderful artwork. Almost every series they have, almost every single thing they've ever drawn is wonderful to look at. Gate 7 is a step above that. It is jaw-droppingly beautiful. This is like artwork that should be framed. When I bought Volume 1 at a bookstore, the person at the register that was ringing up my stack of books stopped at this manga and just looked at the cover and was like, holy crap, where did you get this? This looks amazing. And he was not a manga fan. Even he thought the artwork was stunning. Even if you hate the story, even if you think the characters royally suck, the artwork is so good in this manga, you should get it anyway. But seriously, the story's good. You should totally read it. Number two, it's from Clamp. So maybe you're not a fan of every single manga that has nice artwork, but you might be a fan of Clamp. And, you know, if you want to round out your repertoire of all your Clamp collection, you have to have this one. Even though the series wasn't actually finished, for Clamp, that is kind of standard for them. They rarely finish series. So that should not be even a speed bump. If you're a fan of Clamp, you need to read this. Number three, interesting location. For once, there's something that doesn't take place in Tokyo. And though Kyoto is a major city in Japan, for people outside of Japan, we really don't get to hear much of it. And so it's nice that there is a story that the entire thing takes place in Kyoto and it leans very heavily on Kyoto tradition and Kyoto history. So yeah, a nice change up. Number four, Japanese ancient history. If you're into Japanese history, especially like the feudal era, you're definitely going to like this. This has a ton of Japanese history in it. There's lots of historical characters. There's lots of historical events that it's kind of tied into the story. So if you're interested in Japanese history, this is definitely one you should grab. And number five, it is a very complex story with lots of historical characters. It has a big cast. And so, yeah, if you want something where you really have to pay attention to the details and really keep track of who's doing what, because there's plots and there's subplots and there's bad guys doing other plots. And so if you want something that actually gets your brain working, definitely read this one. 
Okay, so that's it for my review of Gate 7. Thank you for visiting my channel, My Great Wall of Manga. If you're interested in anime too, please visit my website, animehanabi.com.